Welcome to the deep dive, the shortcut you need to feel instantly well-informed. Today we are looking skyward, um, pointing our lens at the Benro Polaris. It's a star tracker, pretty popular with amateur astrophotographers. Yeah. But we aren't talking about the, you know, the standard version. We're deep diving into a grassroots uh, open source revolution, the Alpaca Benro Polaris driver, or ABP. And this is just a perfect example, really, of a community stepping up where maybe a company hasn't. When the first version, V1.0, came out, the interest was massive. Wow. But the reality for users, well, stock firmware was hitting limits. People were seeing noticeable tracking drift, and they were still waiting on promised features, like a proper three-star alignment. And that waiting, it seems like it turned into real frustration. Our sources mention a petition launched way back in January 2025, mm -hmm. over 200 signatures urging Ben Road to fix that drift error, deliver the alignment, and apparently, 10 months later, just silence from the manufacturer? Yeah, that creates a kind of vacuum, doesn't it? Precisely. So our mission today is to unpack how this new version, ABP V2.0, is trying to fill that void. And this isn't just a minor update, right? It sounds like a serious push to make the Polaris into something more professional. Definitely. It's trying to transform it from a consumer gadget into, well, a precision instrument for serious deep sky work. The big aims are cutting down that drift error enabling much longer exposures than people thought possible with this hardware. Okay. So the core goal of V2.0, real astrophotographic precision. They're essentially giving the Polaris a brain transplant, completely rewriting the motion control, expanding its ASCOM alpaca support, which means adding sophisticated features you usually only find on high-end mounts. Things like robust multi-point alignment, pulse guiding, dithering, complex control algorithms. Okay, that's a fundamental leap. So let's start where every imaging session starts. Alignment. This is where that precision has to begin, and uh, what ADP is doing sounds, well, almost like installing NASA-grade GPS in your tracker. Yeah, it's kind of like that. What's really fascinating is the new multi-point alignment system. You know, standard mounts might use one or two sync points, easily messed up by little setup errors. Right. This new system builds a whole correction model from three or more known star positions, S, Y, and C points. And this model then mathematically compensates for all that messy stuff you can't fix perfectly by hand. Tripod tilt polar misalignment, even something called cone error. Okay, hold on. The source material mentioned quest modeling yeah. and something about a closed form quaternion based solution. That sounds intense, NASA level jargon. It is pretty advanced stuff, yeah. What's a quaternion mean for me freezing outside with my gear? Why should I care? Huh, fair question. <laughs> quest is actually tech NASA used for satellite launches. Think of it this way. Normal geometry is like 2D or 3D thinking. Quaternions are hyper-efficient for modeling complex 3D rotations and errors. Faster, more stable than the old ways. Okay. But the practical benefit for you, it's huge. You yeah. basically no longer need to obsess over getting your tripod perfectly level. Really? Yeah, the, the model detects the exact tilt angle and yeah. just corrects for it in the mount's movements seamlessly. So I could plop the tripod down on, say, an uneven hill, and the software just sorts it out? Pretty much. Wow. That saves a lot of setup headache. It does. And ABP uses this tech to integrate plate solving. You called it celestial GPS. That's a good way to put it. Plate solving takes a quick picture of the stars, matches the pattern to a database using apps like ASTAP, and boom, it knows exactly where the mount is pointing instantly. Ah, okay. So the driver uses this through alignment. Each successful plate solve teaches the driver more, making the alignment better and better. Exactly. It's constantly learning and refining. Does that mean I can finally skip those uh, fiddly manual alignment steps in the official Benro app, like the compass align and star align? You absolutely can bypass them completely. The computer nails the alignment precisely. And they also tackled another frustration, the third axis, the rotator. V2.0 adds the proper ASCOM alpaca rotator interface. Ah, so that's not just for panoramas. Well, it's essential for smooth deep sky panoramas, yes. But it also fixes a really annoying quirk of the stock firmware. The original firmware resets your camera's rotation angle back to zero after every GOTO slew. Oh, I hate that. You lose your framing. Exactly. ABP preserves that roll angle. Your framing stays put. Okay, so the fancy math solves setup and alignment headaches. Huge win. But once we're aligned, how does the software make sure the motors keep moving accurately? We need to dive into the uh, the robotic side now, the control algorithm. Right. This is where they treat the Polaris less like a consumer gadget and more like, well, a precision robot. 
They essentially ripped out and rewrote the core motion control system. Rewrote it entirely. From the ground up, basically. Treating the motors like components in a high-end system. And they're using three key algorithms you normally find in, like aerospace or advanced robotics. Okay, wait. Before you list them, Kalman and filtering, model predictive control, PID control. Oh. That sounds intimidating. Can you give us the quick explain, like I'm five on what each one actually does for my star tracking? Huh. Okay, let's try. Think of them as a specialized crew running them out. First, common filtering. This crew member is like the data cleaner. It takes the noisy sensor readings, filters out the errors, smooths things out, and makes sure the system always has the best possible estimate of where it is and how it's moving. Okay, cleaner data in. Got it. Then, model predictive control, or MPC. This one's the planner. When you tell them out to go somewhere, GOTO, yeah. MPC calculates the smartest, smoothest, most efficient path to get there. Reduces strain, improves accuracy, kinematically optimized, they call it. The smart navigator. Makes sense. And finally, PID control. This is your precision driver. It provides closed loop speed regulation. It constantly measures where the motor is versus where it should be for perfect tracking and makes tiny instant corrections. Its job is zero drift. Ah, PID. That's the one that really delivers that promise of locked on zero drift tracking. That's the core of it, yes. So connecting those clever algorithms to, you know, actual benefits for the user. The big one seems to be enabling guiding and dithering through software. Exactly. That's probably the most exciting practical breakthrough. So tell us about pulse guiding. That's kind of the holy grail for pushing exposure times, right? It is. The driver implements the ASCOM pulse guiding API. This lets external software, usually it's PHD2, guiding watch a guide star, and send tiny real-time correction commands back to the mount during the long exposure. Tiny corrections, like how tiny? We're talking fractions of a second, millisecond adjustments. It nips any tiny residual drift or polar alignment errors in the bud. Okay, pulse guiding is essential, but uh, if this is just software talking to the existing hardware, won't the, you know, the mechanical slop or lag in the Benro gears kind of mess up that fine control anyway? Can the hardware really keep up? That is the absolute critical challenge they had to solve. Huh. And they tackled it directly in how they control the movement. They implemented what they call precision goto control using that MPC planner we talked about, but combined it with a really important mechanical workaround, explicitly handering zero crossover. Zero crossover. Right. That relates to backlash, doesn't it? The slop when gears change direction. Backlash is always a nightmare to tune out. Exactly. Zero crossover means the software plans movements, so the mount ideally never has to reverse direction slightly to correct an overshoot, which is where backlash bites you. It ensures movements are optimized forwards or backwards without introducing that slop. This makes the GOTO much more accurate and, crucially, makes those tiny pulse guiding corrections effective even with the stock hardware. That's clever. Very clever. And we also shouldn't forget dithering. ABP supports NIA's direct guider for that. Yep, dithering is key for getting really clean final images after stacking. It just makes tiny random shifts to the mount's position between each photo. Right, so hot pixels and noise patterns don't stack up in the same place. Exactly. Stacking software can then easily identify and remove them. And the cool thing is, ABP v2.0 lets you dither using NNA's built-in system without needing a separate guide camera and guide scope. Big simplification out in the field. Okay, so world-class alignment, super sophisticated custom movement control. This all sounds frankly amazing, but how does the average user actually run all this? This brings us to that Nine Air concept, which sounds like it changes the field setup quite a bit. Right, you need some processing power for these algorithms, especially when you're running the main imaging software in INA, that's nighttime imaging and astronomy. Mm. So the ABP driver itself doesn't run on your phone mm -hmm. or uh, on the Polaris hardware directly. Ah, okay, so there's the trade-off for NASA grade math. We mm -hmm. can't just use our phone app anymore. We need, what, a separate computer out there with us. That's generally the setup, yes. It's a trade-off for that level of control. The driver runs on a separate device, often it's a little mini PC, something like the main Equator 4C is popular. Right, I've seen those. That mini PC connects to the Polaris over Wi-Fi, and your camera plugs into the mini PC via USB. The PC runs NIAP, which then controls everything the mount via the ABP driver, the camera, any focusers. It becomes the central hub. And maybe you need a good interface. I saw they developed a new app, the Alpaca Pilot app. Yes, and that's a huge quality of life improvement. It's a modern, responsive web app, a single-page application, technically. Works on phones, tablets, laptops. And the best part, this app gives you a full graphical interface for all the configuration, all the tuning. Much more user-friendly. And speaking of user-friendly wins, I saw they curated the Target catalog. 
That sounds small, but potentially really useful. It's actually a great feature. They ditch the basic Polaris catalog and replace it with a hand-picked list of over 500 really good deep sky objects. They focused on what they call the top 25% of imaging targets based on input from experienced imagers. So you spend less time scrolling through obscure star clusters and more time pointing at the good stuff, the nebulae and galaxies everyone wants to shoot. Exactly. And for the real power users, the app has dedicated pages for diagnostics and tuning. You can actually watch the multi-point alignment model converge in real time or tweak those Kalman filter and PID parameters if you really want to dive deep. That level of transparency into the system is fantastic. Okay, now the big question. Results. How far are people actually pushing the Benro Polaris with ABP v2.0 in the real world? What are the limits? Well, the results from the beta testers have been honestly pretty shocking for hardware at this price point. We're seeing users successfully imaging at 800 millimeter focal length. 800 millimeters on a Polaris? Seriously? Seriously. And getting exposures up to 15 seconds per frame at that focal length, which for a small tracker like this, 15 seconds at 800 millimeters is kind of phenomenal. Wow. For context, I remember struggling to get maybe three second subs reliably at 400 millimeter manually. So 15 seconds at double the focal length. That's transformative. It really is. It allowed some testers to stack like 240 of those 15 second shots for a total integration time of an hour on really nice deep sky targets. And the record holder, apparently one user named Vladimir, managed an equivalent focal length of 1750 millimeter. Wait, how? 1750 millimeter? Yeah, he used a 400 millimeter lens, added a 1.4x teleconverter, and used a dedicated astro camera with smaller pixels, which increases the image scale. That's pushing the hardware to its absolute theoretical limit. Amazing results. Now let's bring it back down to earth a bit. We have to talk caveats, the risks. This is unofficial software taking deep control. Absolutely. And the developers are commendably upfront about this. Using the ADP driver is entirely at your own risk. It might void your Benro warranty, especially because V2.0 is directly commanding the motors in ways the original firmware never did. Right. And crucially, this is important for managing expectations. The software, brilliant as it is, cannot entirely overcome the device's inherent hardware limitations, meaning it's software optimization, not a magic hardware upgrade. If you push for extremely long exposures, especially with those very long focal lengths, you might still hit tracking errors because of the underlying gears and motors. The software can only compensate so much. So it raises the ceiling significantly, but there's still a ceiling set by the physical hardware. Makes sense. Exactly. But the whole project is just a testament to the community. It's open source, and they intend to keep even the advanced algorithms open relies heavily on beta testers feeding back data. The official target for the full V2.0 release is December 2025. Right around the corner then. Okay, so wrapping this deep dive up, ABP V2.0 looks like it fundamentally transforms the Benro Polaris. It takes this, you know, consumer star tracker and turns it into a genuinely powerful, yet still budget-friendly mean air system. You're getting NASA-level alignment tech combined with amazing free software like Nina. It really is a complete unlock of the hardware's potential. Okay, and that brings us to the final thought we want to leave you, the listener, with. Given that Benro has been, well, manfully slow, maybe even silent, responding to community requests like that petition about alignment and drift, will the undeniable success, these frankly groundbreaking results achieved by this third-party open source driver, will that finally compel the manufacturer? Will Benro step up and embed essential features like robust pulse guiding support directly into the core Polaris firmware? If you were Ben Rao, seeing this incredible community effort basically showing you what your own product is capable of, would you keep ignoring it? Or would you embrace it, maybe even collaborate, and unlock that full potential officially? Something to think about. That's the deep dive for today.